I love a great seafood bisque. One of the great things about a seafood bisque is that you really don't have to go out and get anything special because you're really using the leftovers of whatever your shrimp, crab, or lobster dish happen to be. Here I'm peeling lots of shrimp for a paella. I'm going to save the shells for my bisque. Regardless if you're using shrimp, lobster, or crab, you're simply going to want to put them on a tray and dry them out in the oven. It's a good idea to pull them out every once in a while and stir them so that you can make sure that they get dried all the way through. When they're finished, they should be nice and crisp. For this particular bisque, I'm going to use olive oil, and you'll see why later. You can use butter if you like, but I'm going to start with some garlic and shallots. Brown those a bit and then add some celery, carrots, and you can use leeks also. I cook those for a bit and then I'm going to add in my shrimp shells. And I'm going to cook those up and stir those and allow the oil to soak in to the shells themselves. Then I'm going to add just enough water to cover. And then I'm going to bring that to a boil and let it simmer. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to add just a little bit of Rick's Chef salt, some salt, and some white pepper. And already you can see that I'm getting some nice color to my broth. Now we're going to let that cook an hour to three hours, depending on how much you want to reduce it. But I do want to reduce this some. I like to taste it at this point just to see how it's coming along. Now I'm going to let that cool a bit, and then I'm going to start pureeing it. Now if I was using lobster or crab, I'd tend to break it up a little bit with a hammer in a paper bag or something so that the shells aren't quite so big. But because I'm using shrimp shells, they're a little softer, and I'm just going to go ahead and load my blender up and then add some of the liquid to it. Turn it on and let it go for a while. When it's thoroughly pureed, I'm going to run it through a strainer. If I was using lobster or crab, I'd be using cheesecloth here also. Now I don't use a ladle to push it through. I just let it gravity drop in. And then I'll take those pieces and put them back in my mixture and we'll run that back through the blender again with the remaining shrimp shells and liquid. Keep repeating that process until you've pureed all of the shells and the broth. On the last one, I'll usually take my hand and squeeze the rest of the juice out of the shells and the pulp from the vegetables. Now, as you'll see, I already have a fairly dense broth. I'm going to taste that, and then I'm going to season it again with sea salt, and white pepper, and some of Rick's Chef salt. In a separate pan, I'm going to melt some butter and add some flour to it to make a blonde or uncooked roux. Well, I'm going to season my broth as it's heating up. Here I'm using olive oil, Rick Chef salt, white pepper, and a little touch of tapatio or Tabasco. Here I also add some lemon juice. Mix it all up, give it a taste, and determine what else it needs. Now I determined I'd like a little more Rick Chef salt and some sea salt, so I'm going to add that directly to my roux. Now I'll finish my roux, and then I'll add that to my bisque and thicken it. And now for good measure, I'm going to strain it through once again, just to make sure I haven't missed anything. There you have it, a nice, dense shrimp bisque. And there's all kinds of things you can do with this. I'm just going to use mine as a basic soup with a crouton, some sheep's milk Romano cheese, some aioli, and that's why I used olive oil instead of butter, and some fresh parsley. Remember that this particular one is just a base. I could add cream, I could add lobster, I could add shrimp, I could add a mirepoix of finely chopped vegetables. There's all kinds of ways you can doctor this up to be whatever you want it to be.